sharing this ex um, experience with us. It's great. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Michael. Michael tonight will deliver a speech. It's from Project 4, Storytelling. Uh, our evaluator is uh, Philip. Philip tonight is engaged very good. Please, uh, can you read an objective? Certainly. The objective is to understand the techniques available to arouse emotion, to become skilled in arousing emotions while telling a story in six to eight minutes. Okay, timer, six to eight minutes. Six so six, green, seven, nine, and eight minutes break. Okay, let's welcome Michael, the dark stranger. The dark stranger, Michael. Yes, I'd just like to say uh, this story came about because of the wonderful music production, Wicked, that I saw. I don't know whether many of you have seen that so far. But I thoroughly loved that and I was uh, profoundly moved by that. It's hard not to like the Wicked Witch, the West, and to hate the superficial Glenda. <laughs> so that's right up my alley. This is also inspired by a friend of mine as well who. Um, was working with me in uh, theatre and uh, because of the certain politics which we're still working on and trying to get theatre up and running, um, he has become quite depressed and ended in hospital and so hopefully his recovery will be quite rapid. So this is dedicated to him, it's just like, I will say that if you take away a person's substance, no matter whether it's creativity or what, they will deteriorate you nurture them, they will be inspired to move to greater things. So this story is based on that. There was a stranger that came to our club. He was tall. He had a dark look about him. There was a special brilliance in his eyes. When he looked at you, there was the feeling that he could see right down into the bottom of your soul. You may have been mistaken by this, but at the time, no questions were asked. The questions always come later. What we cared about was the mystery that we sensed in this stranger. We waited to see what would happen. One evening, that was different from most others, he gathered us together in the daunting Dixon dwelling, amid the apex arch of the assessors, and he just stood there we all hid in the horseshoe of hesitation. Then, out of his tallness, began the chanting. At first, it was almost a whisper we could hardly hear. There is no meaning to life except through Toastmasters. You'll find salvation only through your blue guidebooks. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. We were caught up in something we didn't understand. He trapped us. Possibly it was his manner. But we came alive with him as he slowly moved us with his chant through the land of linear thinking into consistent, savage, throbbing crescendos of ecstasy as if it was the only thing we could do. We started the chant with him. There is no meaning to life except through Toastmasters you'll find salvation through your blue guidebooks. And he was up on the high horseshoe of hesitation amongst all the mundane ticking timers and flashing green lights. <laughs> and he was steering and radiating all his might with him and we were all shouting, yes, yes, yes. But there were those amongst us who were jealous powers, we felt they should be in the centre of the stage, with the light shining on them and through them. They were against our hero and the chanting and our longing to be with him every free moment. And so little by little, a little later, these critics set to work to make nonsense in the sense that we were making them. And they succeeded. They destroyed our hero's faith in himself. 
he didn't have it anymore. After a few disappointing times and daunting Dixon dwelling, and then later the Bendai Bordello, <laughs> the light finally went out in him. <laughs> they ripped and tore shreds of his soul until he was nothing but a shriveled shell of a man. And the man that had once seemed so tall would now leave our club so much smaller, saying no, no, no. We lived on the border of the time telling each other pale stories of what once was and what might have been if we lived on mysteries, history. We did this until the miracle we never thought would happen again happened. Another stranger came into our town. And he too was tall and dark and had eyes that could stare right down into the bottom of your soul. And he gathered us together and bit the apex arch of the assessors. And with the light shining on him, he started to chant, There is no meaning to life except through Toastmasters. You'll find salvation through your blue guidebooks. And he was up there amongst the high horseshoe of hesitation, guiding us with all his might and magic when we were all shouting, yes, yes, yes. But there were those amongst us who were jealous. You know, you know the sort of thing that they did. Little by little, a little later, these critics put us back on the narrow path of structure and conformity. And they've kept us here by locking our twisted gates and cellar doors. And this is the way things have been in our club for as long as anyone cares to remember. And by the way, how are things in your club? Okay, Thank you very much.